Hi, I'm Lori Dobson. This is Island Update, Part 2, April 3rd, 2020. I'm on Cranberry Isles. So I am addressing the question, what can we do? I think it needs to be asked because we are in a global pandemic and it is in our, our locality and it's spreading. And we've had some deaths increasing. We uh, understand the situation is not really under control and our governor is doing certain things, but we do feel a, an exposure to some uh, vulnerabilities that we have on the island here. And I, uh, in my previous video, talked about how there were uh, COVID infected patients, uh, people that are arriving on main islands. It's becoming a phenomenon that's being reported in newspapers. Uh, such as Al Jazeera, and it will be happening. And our, our resources are limited, as I said before. So uh, the um, response that I've gotten to requests to step up our involvement and our activity, such as the ways that used to be done, like for example, if you, if you look at a documentary called We Heard the Bells, it's uh, from 10 years ago. It's about the Spanish influ 1918 influenza that was so horrible. There were really good measures back then. They figured that of all the things, good nursing was was key and just preventive measures and a very rapid response. And there was a study done by the University of Michigan, Center for Med Medicinal Research, I, I believe it was. Anyway, it's on the documentary. You can look it up. We heard the bells. And they talk about the fact that the, the, the 43 cities that they studied the ones that did the best were the ones that had an early and strong response. And that was just a simple, it seems simple now that, you know, you know, when you have an issue, you strike it early, you strike it hard, just like a cancer. You don't wanna let it get going too far. So I have believed that we do need to do the same thing here. The uh, <clears throat> action that I supported and talked to our select woman about uh, recently was the, uh, and it's now become supported by other towns. For example, Mount Desert Island, which I'll talk about in a second. But by Bar Harbor, who brought up, uh, they, they're the ones who had to ban cruise uh, vessels, cruise ships from coming into port for a while. And they had the power to do it. They also had the power to ban uh, certain other things, but instead they've suspended, which is a voluntary and for, you know, request basically, but they've suspended transient accommodations in hotels, campgrounds, and vacation rental properties, such as Airbnbs and that sort of thing. We have those on our island and and those could be used. There are actually ads out there where they're advertising that people come up here and avoid the coronavirus and come up to an Airbnb. That's on the ads for some of these Airbnbs. It's, it's repugnant, but that they're, you know, putting us out there, sacrificing us to their pockets. Anyway, uh, the Bar Harbor Town Council voted after a very good discussion, but what's more important, people's lives or the profit margin. And they decided to enact the suspension and they voted for it. And then just yesterday, I saw that the town manager of Mount Desert Island had posted something quite as strong and actually more point blank about people not coming and about these same issues and about how, you know, just don't come up and don't rent out your properties, keep some clothes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's, it's ramping up and people are titrating their, their responses. And, um, you know, we, we're doing it here in our local places and it's because things are going to get to a point, for example, in the comments underneath the town, of Mount Desert Island's announcement, public notice, there were four responses to someone saying that they'd, that they knew a, a plumber who went into a house and after going inside and getting the water turned on, the people informed him that they were COVID infected. Um, and that's how you take care of your locality. No, these people don't have an investment in it like the people that are here. And many summer residents are doing their part by staying away and showing solidarity from afar. That is a lovely thing. That is what we, you know, can really 
I'll never forget those people that say those things. They're my friends forever because they're caring about people here that are in a state of extreme vulnerability because we can't go traveling around in our cars trying to find food or provisions or whatever we are dependent on what, what's brought here um, in the event of further quarantine measures that may be coming our way, probably will be. So uh, I, I think that because of these measures, that's why I asked our select woman to also do the same thing and to enact a, a no rental property uh, you know, provision, uh, suspend, suspend it, C call for those things on our island. But on an island, it's so small. Our select board is three people, n not known for being proactive necessarily. It's just more laid back. Uh, but this is a time when we have to do what we have to do. We have to, you know, we have to rise to this occasion. And so I, I don't know anyone else who's doing this like me, but I have done it before in other occasions. I have fought for social peace and justice causes, you know, vigils, protests, rallies, have organized through an organization uh, that uh, did civic causes and helped public planning and, and people's priorities and neighborhood organizations. I've done a lot of different kinds of things to help raise awareness. I was, at Occupy New York City for two weeks talking about income inequality issues. And I saw people coming there that were awesome. They were standing up, the nurses, live theater. It, it was beautiful. It's beautiful to see people when they're, uh, when they discover they have the power to, to make positive change and they stick together and they decide what's important. And I think it's all a matter of deciding what is important right now. Do you love people? Do you care about people? And tell the truth and you know have fun along the way that's part of it definitely definitely realize that this is you know why can't this why can't this be fun too um you know it's deadly serious but it can it can also have a sort of gallows humor to it so uh sorry whoops i'm not supposed to touch my face please uh i will wash my hands as soon as this video is done okay so uh i wrote a few more notes um uh, and like I say, I've been told to step down and keep my head down. Don't say these things, you know, wait till my, uh, wait, wait till people calm down about what I'm saying. And, you know, the world outside catches up to what I'm saying. So it doesn't look like I'm sticking my neck out, but that's, that's not leadership. I'm trying to model leadership so that people see what it looks like and then they can do it. And I can, you know, I can do my job. I just want to help my community and I really enjoy this, you know, kind of becoming a, a pariah and having people send me send me nasty notes and think that I'm against their making a living and I'm not, but uh, it's coming anyway. And the sooner that we get this done, just like Bar Harbor, they said, the sooner we take this hit in the face, the sooner we'll have a season, you know, we'll, we'll keep that curve flat and we can get back to this. But, um, you know, why, while we are doing the measures that are necessary, we'd also be pressuring our leadership, you know, our state rep, our Senate people, and uh, most importantly, I think the governor, um, who needs to do this for us, so it doesn't leave us to fight these fights with our neighbors, these skirmishes. You know, this is a big battle and she has to be the general. So Jana Mills, I'm calling on you to, to help protect our islands in the face of these uh, exoduses of people with infections that are deadly to our islands. Help us by protecting the islands. Doesn't that seem obvious? It does to me. You know, when you're in a global pandemic, you have to think about, you know, how can I best protect my community in the long run? So that's what I've been trying to focus on and uh, hope hope I'm making that point. Let's see, I think that covers everything. Uh, so anyway, I, I did have a question, just getting long here. What would you call for right now if you were Selectman? I, I wish I had a comment section on this YouTube video and to try to find out how to get that. I would like to hear what you would call for. I would call for some basic things, you know, basic steps, basic measures. Just assume you don't have any fear. What would you do to protect your loved ones? And you had the power to do it because guess what? You do. <laughs> That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Everybody has that power. I'm just showing a more overt way of expressing it, but there are many ways to do this. But, uh, but we do have to work together and we have to ramp up our response. We have to protect 
people. All right. Thank you.